How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Natural Explorers, a sim RPG game that we're making with the RPG Maker MB Engine. In this episode, we're going to go over the changes I've made. First significant thing is I've had to update pretty much every one of these plugins. Not necessarily all of these, but most of them I've had to. If you go to yanfly.mo and go to the news, you can see that he's addressed the is dev tools open function not being a function anymore. So I've re-downloaded all of these plugins. Of course, I don't, I'm not using all of these plugins, but I've re-downloaded all of these into the project file. If you're using any of these plugins, you might want to re-download these plugins, update them. To update them, you just overwrite the existing one. You go into your plugin manager, double click on the plugin, and that's it. Once you double click it, it'll re-access the file and you may see a version number update. So I've updated many, many of these plugins. I've added a couple new ones. You can see the plugin list that I'm using now. Slowly growing. I have added a few new states, a few new skills, a new enemy, and I'm expanding the bestiary. So I've added Stinger, which is a skill that costs 30 TP. Every enemy is going to have a skill that generates TP, which is Pincer, and it's a basic attack. Stinger, a skill that costs TP, in this case it's Stinger, 30 TP and it has a 75% chance to inflict scorpion poison. It does a decent amount of damage and a 75% chance to inflict state. And I've added concentrate. And concentrate is a 40 MP costing state stat buff that adds a state of concentrate. So I'll go over to the states and show you the new states that I've made. It costs 40 MP because the new enemy is going to have 40 MP. And concentrate is going to cost 40 MP. Or the cave fox has a skill that costs 30 MP. Vile worm has one that costs 20. The vorpian is going to have concentrate and it's going to cost 40 MP. This is going to make sure that the character, the enemy, can only use their special move one time and at a slightly lower rating than the others. I've gone away from the idea that all enemies are going to have the same experience reward. It just doesn't make sense in the system that I'm setting up. I've updated the experience rewards on all of the enemies. Also, the classes now have a different experience requirement per level. It's their level times a thousand. It just makes more sense that way if you're going to take on harder challenges. But I've gone away from that idea, so now all the enemies are we're going to scale in a very linear fashion. I've created a new item, the Scorpion Stinger, which goes up in the same manner. It is a crafting item that could be sold. Of course, there is no crafting system. I did download Yenfly's item synthesis plugin, and we're probably going to use that one. Some smaller crafting systems. I added an item that is going to work as like a mega elixir. This is just for debugging purposes. When I'm fighting, I don't want to have to restart the game. I'm testing enemies. I've got an item to restore HP and MP. Added that to the starting event here to just give me 10 at the start. Player's not going to start with this. Probably be removed. So once again, I'm using Hidden One's Battlers. I've updated the troops so that you have Vorpian 1 and, and a pair of Vorpians in the same manner that I've done the other enemies. We're slowly expanding the enemy variety. I'd rather add them very slowly one at a time so that I can give each one of them a custom feel. They've all got three separate different individual moves. All of those have their own custom animations. So let's look at the Stinger animation. Very simple, but it's customized. The pincer animation. The scorpion poison, which is a different status effect that I've added a couple of Yanfly's tips and tricks. And here's the concentration <laughs> animation. So let's look at the states that I've added. I've added three new states. We'll look at and radiate after these two. Scorpion Poison. I'm using Yanfly's tips and tricks videos. I'm testing them to see if they still work in version 1.6.1. And so far, everything that I've tested still works, works perfectly. So this is a poison effect that's based on the magic attack power of your target. Let me just look at this just to show you. I'm gonna put a link in the description to this playlist. It's also on Yanfly's website. If you click down here and go to tips and tricks, it loads this playlist tons of interesting ideas and skills that you can put in your game. I'm using a few of them from this playlist. A few ideas that I've just changed slightly. Very, very good resource to any project. So this is the custom damage over time effect. Still works on 1.6.1 beautifully. And I'm also using the In Fire tips and tricks video from Final Fantasy XI and Fly's video. This is a way to add additional damage to every attack. So I've added the skill in Radiate, which is going to be granted probably at level two. I've started the player with it, but I'll probably move it back and also increase the power of it. It grants in Radiate state for 10 turns, costs 10 MP. It has its own custom animation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to do before I jump back into the combat system is somebody brought to my attention the size of the walls here. They're three high and then they're only two high everywhere else. So I kind of want to change that. I'll probably do that real quick.
I'm gonna leave this corner two tiles high because I like how it looks over here and it could be a smaller heal. Let's look at the new enemy and the new skills in game. Start with a buff. This guy is level four and we're level one, so I should have probably leveled my guys up first. I could have started in like two or three, but it's fine. Using his pincer move, getting some TP. The battle system's coming along nicely. We have our level 1 enemy, which we should easily kill. Here's our level 2. Here's the level three. should make taking on level 4 enemy easier. Let's use our test item. Let's use Tommy. The damage over time effect is based on the scorpion's magic attack power. So the concentrate buff on the scorpion may seem like not a strong buff, but it's actually going to double the damage over time effects if he lands the stinger. So there is some strategy behind why he's got a magic attack power bonus. He's gotta build some TP first. It takes 30 to use the stinger move, so he can't just start off by damage over timing, poisoning the party. Of course, while he's blind, he's gonna have a lot of a hard, he's gonna have a much harder time actually landing stinger. And getting TP. Okay, so he didn't actually poison that time, mm -hmm. only 75% chance. I'm debating making that a permit. that actually did poison, but it killed him. I'm debating on making that a certain hit, reducing its damage and increasing the likelihood that it poisons to 100%. 
so that it doesn't instantly do as much damage. But I kind of like it being very strong. We're only level 2. So fighting this thing two levels above the party could be a challenge. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it that damage intensive on the skill. Increase the chance that it poisons to 100%. So let's go ahead and reduce the attack power by two. Get rid of the agility. And we'll just multiply it by magic, atta uh, magic attack power times two. It's slightly less strong. Even though the agility and magic attack power is the same number, I should probably reduce the damage a little bit more. There we go. We've taken 80 off the base damage, ensured that the poison will stick. That so seems a little bit more reasonable. Yep. I still want to um, add on to what we were doing last time with uh, the Tinkerer Shop. So I'm probably going to add Yanfly's item synthesis plugin. Let's go ahead and put that in. Here's item synthesis. So we're going to have to add a bunch of recipes and and call upon a shop that the player can access from the Tinkerer's building. I'm gonna move this up a bit. I think it's gotta be under the item core. It doesn't necessarily say, but we could always look at the video to be sure. Let's go ahead and hit play on this and go to here where it's placed. Underneath the item core and underneath item upgrades, but above shop menu core. Exactly where I thought it was supposed to be. Okay, so that works fine. That's where we'll leave it. We placed in uh, the Tinkerer's shop here, but we required a switch beyond. We talked to Kevin Scott. We're gonna have him turn on Tinkerer's building. This guy is gonna go up here because he's not supposed to be accessed yet. All right, so he turns on the Tinkerer's shop. I think we'll need to set up some boundaries if the shop is accessed. I'll let the player walk here. We'll, we'll block off this entire three area. This tile, this tile, and this tile. And let the player walk here instead. We'll create a new event and we'll require that Tinkerer building be on. And we're going to set the priority to same as characters. It says Tinkerer, Tinkerer's shop blocker. And I'm just going to press Control C and paste it right here. This is a rough way of creating a block. Player can't walk there if the switch is on. The downside to this is if we talk to Devin Scott while he's over here, there'll be a problem with that. We have to set up a region so he can't walk down here, otherwise we'll get stuck there. Let's set up a region. I've set 93 to an area that the events cannot be on. If I go like this, then he will never walk in this area. But even if you talk to him from below him, he'll be above the blocked area. So that's how you stop the events from going to where you don't want them to be. Simple enough. Enough. Let's test this out so we can still walk here because we should be able to if we talk to Devin Scott or however we turn on the switch Rob is gonna have something different, but it looks like the building is solid now It feels like the building is solid. We're solid. We're not able to walk through it But we can walk behind it here I'm thinking I'm gonna make sure that the player can tell this is the entrance by leaving the path making the path a little more Solid Maybe make a little mat or something. Let's give a little bit more of an indicator that this is the entrance this might work. This is on D, so what I'll do is copy this event and paste it here. Edit this so that it is below characters. Require that the Tinker's building need to be on. And change the image. We'll go down to the tile set D. Find that thing. This one. And it looks weird, but I just want something to stick out. I may change it. Let's see how that looks. It's not there. We can walk there. We talk to him. He turns on the switch. We'll turn it on in a different method. Not exactly what I'm going for. We could edit the doodad and move it over a little bit. I think we should do that. That might actually work better. Let's hit F10 and edit the doodads. Edit the Tinker's house. Change position. Move it over just a bit. Be like that. And I'm going to accept my settings, finish my edit, and save and close. And I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave it like that. So it kind of looks like an entrance step. And when the player touches this block or presses enter, they'll either be transferred to an interior or I'll call up the item synthesis menu from right here. But we're gonna do that on the next episode. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. If you would like to come hang out, we have a Discord. Link is in the description below. If you'd like to support what I do on this channel, please consider backing me on Patreon. That is patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming. You can follow me on Twitter. I am at driftwoodgaming. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember to stay awesome, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.